Hello guys, back again with the Alrasta channel, and this time, as always, we will be back to talk about the best Donghua series, and of course, it is Swallowed Star. In the previous episode, we saw Lei Shen, who inevitably had to get rid of his ego when he received the inheritance from Master Kabu. After burying Hook and Gaia's bodies on planet Bailan, Luo Feng also received invitations from Ganwu Auction House and Giant Axe Arena. However, instead of thinking about this, Luo Feng will focus first on making preparations to face the alien invaders from the Nolan family. Then, what will Luo Feng do in preparation? Okay, without further delay, we will go straight to the storyline. Luo Feng had previously sent an application for protection to the Black Dragon Mountain Empire after discovering that space bandits were trying to invade. However, he was shocked when he received an email back saying that the ownership of planet Earth was currently in dispute. So the Empire would soon conduct a review. And during the review process, Luo Feng could not make a request to be able to get protection over the Earth. The sovereignty of the Earth that Luo Feng had worked so hard to obtain was now, in fact, just a waste. Hong said that now the laws of the Empire were broken and could not be expected at all. From now on, they have lost the dependency that can be expected as the protectors of the Earth. Even in the problems that are now happening, the Empire has a very big role. Luo Feng had the assumption that the person who did this must have come from the higher-ups of the Empire. It was likely that the Ninth Princess, or Brolin, was the culprit. But for now, it didn't really matter who the person who had interfered was. The point is that no one can protect the Earth except the natives themselves. Lei Shen said that Ming Yu had previously given five planets as compensation if there was absolutely no hope of winning. When they fought the invaders, inevitably the Earthlings had to migrate between stars, aka move to the planets given by Ming Yu before. Babata asked, Why don't they just buy ninth level universe slaves to protect Earth? They can, but it's very dangerous. A ninth level universe level warrior is already on the threshold of the next level. And after the slave reaches the domain master level, the biochip embedded in his brain will no longer function. At that time, there is a possibility that the slave will even rebel. The time left was also very urgent. Building trust with the slaves would not take time. Instead of doing this, Luo Feng thought it would be better if they did some training. Make some kind of trick to be able to fight a strong enemy. And a very suitable place for them to be able to practice was the killing field. Because in that place, records of the strength of all fighters were available. Likewise with Davin and Bai Kaluo, who were on their way to Earth. Next, we will be taken to the killing field. Luo Feng's team, which consists of Luo Feng, Hong, Lei Shen, Ao Gu, and Meng Yi, is currently practicing combat against Davin and Bai Kaluo's virtual forms. In the early days of training, they were completely unable to give their opponents any meaningful offense. Of course, this is because there is a huge difference in strength, and it cannot be covered up. Fortunately, there were only three months left. In that limited time, it was clear that neither Davin nor Bai Kaluo had time to increase their strength. Although the sense of oppression brought by the two aliens was very similar to the air of oppression given by Nolanshan, whether it was 100 times or 1,000 times, whatever it was, Luo Feng and the others believed that if they continued to fight, there was a chance to get a change once they could fully memorize the opponent's movements. While the heroes continue training, we'll move on to the invader's plane. Nolan Shan, who was on a call at the time, discussed the abilities of Bai Kaluo, his proud disciple, who had the ability to create a wind domain. Nolan said that although the exemplary disciple still had deep flaws in terms of controlling his domain, as long as that one ability was not revealed, even the figure of a universe warrior of the ninth whim was no match for him. Bai Kaluo said, there are no universe level warriors on earth anyway. 
Bai Kaluo felt impatient, wanting to quickly complete the task given by his master. It seems that he is very confident that he can slaughter the Earth Warriors, guys. On Earth itself, the mechanical race's spaceship at the bottom of the sea was the most valuable treasure after the Golden Horn. According to Davin, they had to secure the airship first, and only then would they deal with Luo Feng. Once again, Bai Kaluo also took it lightly. According to him, after they defeated Luo Feng, the Earth would no longer be able to provide resistance, and they could also get the treasure easily. From these two different arguments, it was enough to show that these two aliens were not very familiar with each other. Both of them are fighting to get recognition from Nolan. Nolan also thinks the same as his favorite disciple. He here stipulates that defeating Luo Feng will be the top priority, while the mechanical race spaceship will be the second target, which can be obtained at any time after successfully defeating Luo Feng and his team. It was now less than 70 days until they arrived on Earth, and here Nolan reminded Davin and Bai Kaluo that they should not take their opponents lightly, as some of the previous operations had failed unexpectedly. Once again, Bai Kaluo underestimated Luo Feng's team, saying that he never neglected his training at all, even if the opponent was only at the star level. It was a sarcastic sentence directed at Davin. Davin was quite annoyed when he saw Bai Kaluo's attention-seeking behavior in front of Nolan. The scene moved to Luo Feng and his team, who were still training against Bai Kaluo and Davin in the killing field. Until now, they still haven't gotten a single victory. There have been three training sessions they have done. Among the whole team against Davin, the results are zero wins and 104 losses. Then the whole team against Bai Kaluo, the results are zero wins and 144 losses. Then there is also the whole team against Davin and Bai Kaluo together, and the results are zero wins and 247 losses, and the numbers are still growing. After a bit of understanding of the opponent's movements, Luo Feng and the team eventually managed to grab one victory against Davin. Utilizing a trick, when Davin focused on facing Luo Feng, Luo Feng used the rubbed cloud rattan to counterattack. Although it was successfully dodged, in the other direction, Aogu used a red copper shard to pierce Luo Feng's rubbed cloud rattan while piercing Davin's head. One victory was the first step. Luo Feng's team was now getting used to the opponent's movements and the fighting style they used, until finally, Luo Feng's team could achieve five wins when they faced Davin. Luo Feng felt a bit uneasy. Indeed, they could win several times against Davin, who was at the sixth level of the universe. But there was absolutely no victory obtained when dealing with Bai Kaluo, who had reached the 8th level of the of the universe. And when dealing with those two people at once, it seemed as if Luo Feng and the others had no hope at all. Well, after all, they had tried their best. Unlike his colleagues, apart from seeking real combat experience in the killing field, Luo Feng also had to do some personal things. But they were still related to the matter of increasing strength, namely feeding his golden-horned behemoth body with combination metals. In order not to make Earthlings uneasy, Luo Feng did so on the moon, after he gained more control over his body. Not only could Luo Feng's golden horn body and human body appear simultaneously, but both could also train independently without interfering with each other. The core cells that originally belonged to the golden horn body, as the core of Luo Feng's life, could now also move freely between his two bodies and could even be stored elsewhere. As long as the core cells were safe, Luo Feng would not die, even if he suffered severe injuries. That was true, but Babata was worried if Luo Feng's one advantage was instead used by him to fight blindly to the point of being on the verge of death. After all, for now, the effect of Luo Feng's regeneration was still not perfect, so he had to level up first. After going through the adventures in the Thunderworld before, Luo Feng's golden horn body had now reached the ninth level star level. And after the golden horn broke through the universe level, he believed that defeating Bai Kaluo 
was definitely not an impossibility. 900 hours, or one and a half months, was the time left before the invaders set foot on Earth, and the countdown was still continuing. The remaining time is used by Earthlings to evacuate, so that later Luo Feng and the team will not be worried when the big battle takes place. In addition to practicing in the killing field, Luo Feng's understanding of the Soul Seal method and Hu Yanbo's secret method is currently stuck and can only be resumed when Luo Feng breaks through to the next level. When Luo Feng was flying, he felt something strange when the golden horn that was now in the inner world went berserk. In Luo Feng's inner world was a vast continent, a place that his golden horn body used to hibernate, and it would grow larger and larger as the golden horn itself grew stronger. For the strangeness felt by Luo Feng, Babata then explained that currently, the inner world of the Golden Horn has grown from 90 kilometers to 1,000 kilometers, along with the natural metals that have formed around the Golden Horn. This kind of thing was usually a sign that the Golden Horn was about to make a breakthrough. Not long after, Luo Feng could feel the power of the Golden Horn stored inside his body, fluctuating. The natural metals contained in the inner world also continued to grow. The golden horn with overflowing power then released laser shots upwards, destroying the planets contained within Luofeng's soul core. Babata said that the nine planets that had just been destroyed represented the golden horned behemoth's level and now that they had been destroyed, they would evolve into a spiral galaxy, indicating that the golden-horned behemoth had now reached the universe level. The wings are getting wider, and the tail is getting longer, along with the monster's third horn. And sure enough, after the Golden Horn body reached the universe level, Luo Feng was able to get one victory when dealing with Bai Kaluo in the killing field. But still, they couldn't win when faced with two enemies at once. The chance of winning was nowhere in sight, while there were only 100 hours left before the invaders arrived. And the next thing that could be done to avoid fighting two enemies at the same time was to use long-range weapons fighting them one by one in order to increase the percentage of victory. And in this case, Luo Feng had prepared a strategy that might be implemented by them. To show that they all then re-entered the killing field, and who would have thought that there they would instead be reunited with a tall, bald alien figure. And of course, he is Bai Kaluo. When they passed each other, Bai Kaluo said that even though this was the first time they met each other, the alien already had a lot of battle history against Luo Feng in the killing field. And the result was 207 wins and zero losses. He thought that kind of score was very boring. Luo Feng here also revealed that he and his team did the same thing as Bai Kaluo. And the result was 576 defeats without telling how many victories had been achieved. While grinning, the alien asked why Luo Feng still dared to challenge Nolan Shan's family, even though he had a small chance of winning. Luo Feng casually replied, Simply put, he dared to challenge yes, because he was brave. Luo Feng's words that were very brave were very incompatible with the strength he had said by Kaluo. Courage without strength will only make him die faster. Luo Feng again threw a very bold question. He asked, considering Bai Kaluo was from the Sword Clan, why did he even follow Nolan Shan's family? If the reason was to pursue strength, why would he accept orders to become a space bandit with the intention of taking away other people's planets? How dishonorable and shameless. <laughs> Luo Feng's courage made Bai Kaluo quite interested. Luo Feng didn't feel any fear at all coming face to face with a figure that had reached the level of the universe like him. 
he even dared to speak boldly. Of course, for now, Luo Feng was asked by him to prepare, as his arrival time on Earth was now less than a day away. As he was about to leave, the alien said that Luo Feng and the Earthlings would have to pay the price for Luo Feng's overly stubborn attitude. Switching from virtual space to the real world, Luo Feng reunited with Hong and Lei Shen. They were going to get ready, as there were now only three hours left before the Nolan family's spaceship arrived there. After securing his family inside the impenetrable castle, Luo Feng and the others left to intercept the approaching enemy on planet Earth. On the other side, the enemy spacecraft received an alert that a C-9-class aircraft had been detected approaching them. And who else if not Luo Feng's team aircraft? So what was Luo Feng planning to do by directly confronting the most dangerous enemy in front of him? Let's watch the continuation of the episode next week, guys. And that is the ending of Swallow Star Series Episode 124 this time. Thank you to those of you who have watched until the last minute. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And the last word from me, bye.